As a result of my earlier YouTube video, I've had a lot of requests from hunters seeking more information on the type of climbing tree stand that I use and how I go about hunting from it. Whilst I'm not promoting any one type of climbing tree stand, as there are many types out there to choose from, the brand of tree stand that I have is a Summit, which I've found to be very suitable for the style of hunting that I do. It weighs 10.43 kilograms and is light and compact enough to carry into a suitable location several kilometres into the bush. I must stress that the most important thing whilst using any type of tree stand is safety. A fall from any height can result in serious injury or worse still death. It is for that reason that I never use my climbing tree stand without wearing a safety harness that is then attached to a safety rope around the tree trunk. Another safety issue that needs consideration before using a climbing tree stand is the condition of the tree. Trees with dead overhanging branches, hollowed tree trunks and unstable roots need to be avoided as this will only increase the risk of having an accident. For the summit climbing tree stand that I use, the tree trunk needs to be between 200 to 500 millimetres in diameter. As an added safety precaution, I always remove the bolt from my rifle before hauling it up. I attach the rope to the trigger guard so the barrel is pointing towards the ground. In most situations, I'll find that a height of between four to six metres off the ground is all that is required to be able to see and get a shot at a deer. For the purpose of this demonstration, my feet are only a couple of metres off the ground. I've shot several deer from this height, mainly in locations where there is a lot of slope in the ground. I usually set up my tree stand the evening before and leave it there overnight. This enables me to be back in at first light the next morning. I usually stay in the stand from around dawn till around 10 o'clock. And if I'm camped nearby, I'm usually back in it again around 3 p.m. till dark. By standing up and turning around, the tree trunk can be made to use as a rest to take a shot at an animal that is behind you. The only blind spot is directly in line with the tree trunk itself. Having a comfortable padded seat makes it easy to sit for a long period of time without moving around and fidgeting. Mozzie repellent is also handy in the warmer months, especially if your stand is set up close to a wallow or a creek. I have to admit that I've been too comfortable and gone to sleep on a couple of occasions. That's where the padded armrest comes in handy, as I have prevented me from falling out of the seat. I tape up the barrel of my rifle to prevent it getting blocked with dirt or mud. Climbing down in the tree stand is the same as going up, only in reverse. These two Samba stags were filmed on the 14th of October at 7.07pm. They were somewhat cautious had they just crossed my scent trail where I'd walked in two and a half hours earlier. They were heading to a feeding area from where they had been bedded during the day. Hunting at ground level, it would have been difficult to take a shot as the only clear area is the game trail that these deer are located on. Off to the side of the game trail, the blackberry vines and ground cover are over two metres high. By having my climbing tree stand off to the side, I'm able to get a good view of the deer travelling along this game trail. The slight breeze is coming from left of screen, so the two stags were unable to smell me, but they were on edge crossing where I had walked in. This stag came in on the same game trail six minutes later and also crossed my scent line. He has been wallowing as can be seen by the watermark along the side of his body. I am not sure that he is being cautious because of the other stags in the area or that my scent that would have been brushed onto the vegetation as I walked in has him on edge.
The fact that this stag is not stopping to browse on his way down the game trail indicates to me his level of alertness and caution. I have found that feeding areas that have a large amount of blackberry bushes will be heavily browsed, especially during the colder months of the year when the deer work harder to maintain their fitness level. These areas allow the deer to collect a large amount of food without having to expend a high level of energy to get it. Setting up a tree stand that overlooks a well-used feeding area can be very productive, especially at peak feeding times of dawn and dusk. There are three main locations that I set my tree stand up on. Overlooking a feeding area, overlooking an intersection of a game trail, or overlooking a wallow. This footage was taken overlooking a wallow. With the aid of a trail camera, you can gather the intel as to what time of the day the deer are using any of the three mentioned locations. Height above the ground is not as important as making sure that your scent is not drifting into the area where the deer are likely to come from. This particular stag had used the wallow that was located further down the gully below me. My feet are about four metres off the ground and as you can see this stag at no point looks upwards, only seeking danger at ground level. In the meantime the spiky stag had entered the wallow opposite me and was having a great time frolicking in the water and entangling his antlers in the sedge or sword grass as it is more commonly called. I look for an intersection of where several game trails converge together. This is often at the foot of a spur or at a crossing point of a gully or creek. Like us, the deer will use the path of least resistance and will avoid clambering over logs and boulders. I must stress that you may spend many hours sitting in a tree stand without seeing a deer, so patience is the number one requirement. The positive side is that when you do see a deer, you will have a high chance of being able to shoot it or film it from your elevated position. As can be seen by this footage, there would have been plenty of opportunities for me to take a shot at any of these stags. Not having to contend with dense ground cover and or thick trees is one of the main advantages of a climbing tree stand. Often the hardest part in setting up a climbing tree stand is finding a suitable tree within shooting range of your chosen location. This may involve a lot of scouting before setting up and perhaps a removal of vegetation to provide a clear shooting line. It often pays to select several sites so as you have a choice dependent on wind direction. The likely change in the thermals also needs to be factored in so as you are not caught out as the sun sets and the thermals draw down, or in the morning as the temperature increases and the thermals start to rise. To avoid this occurrence, I tend to try to set up off to the side, rather than directly above or directly below. Having your ear so close that you can hear it breathing and it doesn't know that you're observing it only metres away is a great feeling that I always enjoy. I derive great pleasure from watching deer going about their daily lives and a lot can be learned from observing their habits and behaviour. This young stag was like a kid in a lolly shop, having as much fun as he could in the adult's wallow. 
Hearing him splashing around in the water and prancing around like a racehorse was a great experience for me, one which I hope you enjoyed watching as well.